paranormal experiences don't really work to a time scale, and therefore we invite you to listen to a dark mini sun. Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment of a dark minisode. We like to place these on a Wednesday so it's midweek and you still get a bit of a taste of what's to come on Friday when we have episode 7 of season 16. Of course the shout has already gone out and it's clearly been heard because we've had an influx of your correspondence for season 17. However, Please keep continuing to send in your experiences for Season 17. In regards to the number of usable submissions we've already received for the main show, it's probably our highest number to date. But as you know, I don't just require content for the show. Yes, I do require content for the show, but I also love reading paranormal experiences. It's why I chose to do this in the first place because we received that many experiences that were sadly too short to make into a full episode. So, we devised a minisode, so people could get their experiences heard. And if there's one thing doing the Dark Paranormal, the Patreon shows and the minisodes has shown me from your feedback, is that there does seem to be some sort of cathartic release when you put pen to paper regarding your paranormal experience. Especially when you know that your experience and what you're putting your time and effort into writing is going to be heard by a like-minded individual. So if you do have a paranormal experience and you've always wondered whether you should share it, the answer is yes, you should. Because we do not care if you write in anonymously, if you change details location-wise, if you change genders, names, anything within your experience... The only thing we want to know is what you write down as your paranormal experience is how it happened. As long as the paranormal element of your experience remains identical to how it happened, we will ensure to air your experience, be it here on a minisode, on the main show itself, or on our Patreon show, Dark Bites. But of course, you can't do any of that unless you've got the email address. So please, take a pen and write this down. Contact at the dark paranormal.com. That's contact at the dark paranormal.com. But right now, let's jump into this week's dark minisode. And this week's experience has come in from Tom. And Tom writes Hey Kev, I'm a huge fan of the show, and I've wanted to submit this experience for a long time. I'll use my real name but other names will have been changed just for privacy's sake. I grew up in a small town in Kansas, the sort of town that didn't have stop signs and all of the grades are located in a single building. We moved into this nice little house when I was eight years old. The layout of the house was a bit strange. It was a split-level home, with the front door opening onto a landing in between the first and second floor. When we first moved in, everything was good. The only problem being that the woods behind the house made you feel like they were watching you. Like a void that you should avoid at all costs. That and the paint, which was a very ugly green and everywhere. For the two years of living there, nothing happened that was major. Just small things like keys or books, toys not being where we left them, small noises and the feeling of being chased when you'd leave the basement. When I started the fifth grade, in the middle of the night, the house caught fire. The kitchen was destroyed and all but one of our newborn kittens died. My dog also died that day, but not because of the fire. He was hit by my school bus. I've also thought the fire was not so much a catalyst, more of a key. It unlocked something on that day and let it 
out into the world. And whatever got out had some serious anger issues. And it was now our problem. Things started happening at a huge rate. It started small. Shadows appearing, things falling and breaking. The odd whisper you can't make out. And then it happened all the time. This was basically after we'd been forced back into the house when it was almost reconstructed to complete the construction ourselves. Not long after, we noticed all of our personalities began to change. My parents began fighting and being abusive towards my sister and I. Ever since I was a young child, I was outgoing, but I was now withdrawn and would often be found staring at a wall, zoned out. Meanwhile, my baby sister would be having full-blown conversations with thin air. One day, I took a shower in my parents' bathroom, and everything was normal, until out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow. It was hazy at first, until it slowly gained form. And there was an old lady standing there watching me. Dishevelled grey-white hair and a light blue floral dress, hunched over with a very unsettling grin. I asked my folks about it, but I was told it was just my imagination. I was reading too much, apparently. A couple of hours later, we got a phone call to say my great-great-grandma had suddenly passed away. People began saying, oh, she must have come to say goodbye to you. Now, as nice a thought as that is, I knew that that was not her. My neighbours and I decided to go exploring one day. The woods behind the house seemed like the perfect place to do so. We went back there and walked around a dried riverbed. And we found all sorts of things. Washers and dryers, a refrigerator, and most importantly, a car. And this car had bullet holes all over it and blood stains on the driver's seat. This car, it would turn out, belonged to the previous owner's husband. When we finally left, my other neighbour saw us and immediately ran up to us and started yelling. It's unsafe in there, you don't belong there. If you go back there again, you'll be in big trouble. At that point, things went from everyday weird to utter hatred. I'd wake up in random places. I began locking my door in case I was sleepwalking, but I'd still end up in the bathtub or on the floor next to the couch, and my door still locked from the inside. The house became oppressive. There was always a chill, no matter how hot it got. And then the cuts and scratches started showing up. My back, my neck, my face, my arms. Scratches appearing all over them. I still have scars from most of them, even today. I then started losing time. I'd get home from school and three hours later my parents would get home. But more often than not, it would be like ten minutes to me before I'd hear the car coming up the driveway. An old lady would stand at the foot of my bed and grin, the lady from the shower. Never moving, never making a sound, just standing there. The only thing that changed over time was her face. The grin turned into a smirk, then a grimace, then anger, and finally, rage. Over the course of a year, my nightly visitor would slowly get progressively angrier. The day she entered full rage is the day everything hit the fan. The occasional knocking that we all ignored became bangs. 
The whispers became screams. The decorations became projectiles. The effect was beyond terrifying. My mother started drinking heavily. Heavily enough that normal people would get alcohol poisoning. She started beating me any time she was mildly inconvenienced. A couple of times she actually tried to kill me. She, to this day, has no recollection of these events. But the damage has long since been done, and I no longer speak to her. My father, who was an outgoing, strong individual, became distant and started doing everything he could to protect my sister. My sister started seeing people, people wearing chains. They were always walking slowly in single file. She told me many years later, and a few drinks in, that she would watch them walk through my bedroom door. She would hear them scream in pain, and my screams would join them. She said they were never the same group, and they all appeared to be slaves. We've yet to find any records of slavery on the property, but it's entirely possible. My mother started doing the Ouija board multiple times a day, claiming she was talking to her guardian angel. She would even make life decisions based off what come back. These included cheating, stealing, abusing, drinking at work, and many, many more things. Things that she had never even contemplated doing up until that point. I was one day pushed down the stairs. Not a long fall, but enough to cause some nasty bruises. The day finally came when we lost the house. Living in a house that was still messed up from a fire and about as cosy as a morgue had finally ended. We moved to a nice little suburb. But the people moving was not four, it was five. We, of course, had no way of knowing it, but we found out very quickly. Because the cold started happening. Then came the books. Ants, specifically. I started waking up, being covered in ants from head to toe. Two of my cats and all three of my dogs would avoid my room at all costs. If they came near, they would either get scared or violent, and then try to get away as quickly as possible. After a year, she showed up. This time she was grinning, and every time I saw her, something horrible would happen. A car accident. My brand new computer breaking after a few days. Accidents in the family. It felt like a horror movie checklist, and the only thing missing was us dying. But we almost did that a few times. But it was a very close call. Missing a movie time at a certain movie theatre that was shot up by someone. A tree falling in the road just as we passed it. A hot tub shorting out and almost catching fire. I even woke up with shards of glass in my chest on more than one occasion. This behaviour went on for years. Screams, bangs. And here's the part where things should wrap up after 20 years of dealing with this thing. Telling this story has taken me a long time. I wrote this in sections over months. My father is in denial of anything ever happening and will only come close to acknowledging it if he's completely drunk. I don't know about my mother as we don't speak, and my sister will admit what happened, though she wants nothing to do with it. As for me, well, I know it follows me. To this day, I'm still drawn to that house, like I need to go back. But the one thing I shouldn't do is talk about it. Have you ever been driving down the road and thought you saw something in the rearview mirror? Well, I can confirm it's not just a trope. 
I was telling my friend about the house in much greater detail when the car I was driving, a 2021 Toyota Corolla, suddenly shut off whilst doing 45 miles per hour. I coasted to a safe place and pulled over. While trying to figure out what had happened, I caught sight of grey-white hair in my rearview mirror. I spun around just in time to find no one there. A week later, I'm in that car, driving, talking to my wife about that experience, and all the fuses blew. And once again, in the corner of my vision, I saw white hair move insanely fast. I still see her all the time. Recently, I had my favourite whiskey glass fly ten feet and shatter against the wall. And yes, at the time, I was talking about her. The pure negative energy that house gave off has affected every aspect of my life. I've scars I can never explain in places I can't reach. And I've noticed an increase in activity lately. And the lady's been showing up again. I found out that just before this increase in activity, that old house had been hit by a tornado. It seems to be starting again. I know this is all over the place and I apologise. I glossed over a lot of things that happened, especially minor things like knocks and whispers. They were too much of an everyday occurrence. The one thing I want to say is that the house was so evil. It actively wants to hurt you. And it's not very quiet about that fact. The nightmares have started again. And I have no doubt I will have even more stories shortly after this. Things seem to go from zero to a hundred faster than most cars, it feels like. My extended family never did once visit us in that house. I think because of that house. If you have any questions about any events, I'm more than happy to answer them. My wife and I love your show, keep up the amazing work, and we have you and your family in our thoughts. From Tom. Well, thank you, Tom, especially for your kind words at the end. I'll be perfectly honest with you, Tom, I'm scared on your behalf. And please do continue to keep us informed of anything that goes on as and when it happens. And I sincerely hope everything remains calm. But thank you so much for sending in your true paranormal experience. And who knows, maybe one of our listeners could shed more light on what you're going through and maybe even help. So to everyone, the email address is the same for your submissions as it is to get in contact. It's contact at the dark paranormal.com. But until Friday, thank you for choosing to spend your time with me here on this mini-sode, and I'll speak to you all on Friday for episode 7 of season 16. Until then, take care.